I'm incredibly excited, but at the same time, I'm cautious as well. I think, I mean, if you look into the, the history of nanotechnology over there and how it has evolved for the last couple of decades, at least for me, there has never been a shred of doubt that it's an, it's an enabling technology with incredible potential. But I think more and more we are realizing a sort of a rather discomforting fact that nanotechnology, in spite of all its amazing potential, might not evolve as a disruptive technology like which we envisioned or got excited a couple of decades back. Uh, rather, what nanotechnology is slowly evolving into is a sort of a more refinement and it, or, or it is very good in refining or improving a lot of current technologies. Uh, and that doesn't mean we, we, it's a discouraging statement. It's a, there is a lot of potential and there are new frontiers that are slowly and gradually opening up for nanomedicine or drug delivery purposes. For example, I'm currently extremely excited about uh, a very emerging field, which I think needs a lot of investment and a lot of, and it's, it's, it makes a lot of curiosity as well into the research communities, the use of nanomaterials as antimicrobials. And I know and it's reported everywhere in the literature that antimicrobial resistance uh, is rampant now. And that's a serious challenge for healthcare sector. And it's really widespread and it's even for top tropical countries where infectious diseases are re-emerging. And so nanomaterials can be an amazing uh, tool to circumvent those challenges and give us new opportunities to address those issues which are re-emerging at a global scale. And I think those are the exciting bits. And so if you, if you ask me, I would like to have new frontiers opening and it, as far as drug delivery is concerned, I believe uh, it will certainly improve a lot of the existing technologies, if not bring certain new things, which I'm very much looking forward to. <music> Nanomedicines are being used for a wide variety of diseases, but I think just like the previous question, uh, one of the major thrush areas of its use is in cancer. And, that's pretty popular field of equalization of nanomedicine. What I would like to see though, and it's already coming up, that nanomaterials are being used for drug delivery and diagnostic purposes, and maybe imaging purposes as well, in certain other diseases, for example, endocrinal disease, diabetes, for example. Or, and I would like to also see it being getting more and more used for uh, genetic diseases or inherited disorders, for example. And there are already publications which show that nanomaterials can be used as a very efficacious vector of genetic materials like DNA, RNA. And again, it's, a, it's, a, it's an active research field, so we are learning something new every day. Uh, I would like to see more and more uh, applications there, and it's emerging, so that's the really good news. Uh, another thing that is again an emerging field is the application of nanomaterials for tissue engineering and nanomaterials again because of those unprecedented properties which can include conductivity or paramagnetism or fluorescence. I mean nanomaterials are can be quite conducive for developing, developing uh, new age biomaterials which can be used for different other, different other procedures or implants or prosthetics. I think that's a real, uh, real exciting field that I'm looking forward and I want it to be used more and more there. And I have already said my fascination about my using nanomaterials for uh, as antimicrobials, given, given the real challenge that the healthcare sector is facing now uh, today because of this widespread anti antimicrobial resistance. I think nanomaterials are getting used, but it needs much more attention than what it is getting now, which I hope uh, our future will bring. In fact, if you look from the inception of nanomedicine term, I mean, nanomedicine or these drug delivery platforms with nanomaterials 
has always been used for cancer treatment. And when I say treatment of cancer, uh, there is a wide variety of uses. Now, it will be difficult to cover them all within the, within the scope of just one interview, uh, because there is an inter, inter, uh, inter spectrum of these um, research that is going on. Uh, I'll just give you a simple example, because maybe examples work better than just explaining. I mean, Doxil, which is taken as arguably the most successful uh, product that has come out of an uh, amount of nanomedicine research, is a liposomal preparation of dox, doxorubicin, which is a very popular anti-cancer drug. But if you look into doxorubicin and when it was applied to cancer patients, it has tremendous amount of systemic toxicity and there were a lot of side effects. Uh, cardiotoxicity, for example, um, was one of the major limiting factors of using doxorubicin. But when this doxorubicin, the same doxorubicin drug, which is otherwise toxic, they were encapsulated within liposomes, uh, which made it nanoparticles, encapsulated nanoformulations. The cardiotoxicity part, in fact, with some allied toxicity side effects of doxorubicin, they ac actually diminished. So imagine the magic by just putting those drugs in, in an in encapsulated format within nanomaterials have taken out or largely addressed the issues that we already always had with doxorubicin. And that's the incredible things that simple tweaking of technology can do. So in, can in that cancer, this is one of the brightest examples of how nanotechnology can be used. Now, what we are doing also is, and I think there is a lot of research going on throughout the world is, the cancer tissue, uh, because of its unique pathology, is different from, of course, healthy tissue. And there are a lot of things. For example, there are certain receptors which are overexpressed in cancer cells, but it is not the case for normal healthy tissues. So what we are trying to do is, we are trying to utilize these certain, these unique features of cancer tissue, and we are trying to engineer nanoparticles, which will utilize these cues, physical chemical cues in cancer tissue, and will help in drug delivery. And we typically call it targeted nanoformulations. We, the ambition with these formulations are that they will target specific cancerous tissues while leaving the normal healthy tissue aside so that the treatment will be delivered in a site-specific and precise manner, which has always been the dream and we are working towards that. Uh, apart from that, nanomaterials are incredible and unprecedented materials because of their very small sizes, which also makes them suitable sometimes at times for biomedical imaging. And they, they can provide with certain edge over the, uh, over the contemporary imaging agents. So what we can do is we can combine this drug delivery perspective with bioimaging capability. And what we are trying to develop is multimodal platforms, uh, theranostic platforms. I think that's very exciting. And uh, if you ask me, I, I think that's where the future is. So there is an entire array of different uh, diagnostic and therapeutic platforms emerging with nanomedicine and uh, it's, 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 it's a fast evolving field and I'm pretty much intrigued with it. So I'm pretty much, I'm, I'm part of this entire evolution and I look forward to some great future.